So we know that energy is conserved, and in this unit we're going to think about all the times when it feels like maybe it's changing. So let's start with our statement of conservation of energy. Conservation basically told us that the mechanical energy, because that's the one we're considering at the moment, the mechanical energy, which is the sum of the kinetic and the potential energy, has to be constant for an isolated system. So now we have to consider that part for an isolated system. So let's think about our pendulum demo. When that pendulum was hanging straight down like this, it was just sitting there, wasn't moving. So we're going to say its initial kinetic energy, K0, is 0. And we're going to define its initial potential energy to be 0. Because for gravitational potential energy, we're free to say whatever level is 0 we want. So we're going to call that u equals 0, the 0 of gravitational potential energy. We'll say that is 0 on the y-axis. So therefore, the E mechanical, the mechanical energy, is 0. And we look at this and say, OK, that's easy to do. Let's go look at it with our real pendulum. This is my intimate pendulum here. And it's 0. Everything's fine. And according to conservation, it should remain 0. But the main thing we did, we did a demo where we pushed it, and we gave it energy. And now it's moving. Right? Now it's oscillating. So let's see, what did I do? I pushed it. Let's see. So we can draw it um, already pushed a little bit like that. We can draw my hand, pushing it a little bit like that. And I'm applying a force, Fp. And that force gets applied over a distance. I pushed it about delta x. Because you know the point of all this is we did work on it. Right? But the key is we did work that was not part of the isolated system. So we're going to write it as W ext. We, oh, ext is a subscript. We did external work on the mass. And it's still Fp times delta x. It's the same work that we, as we described it before. And they're the same direction, so the cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm leaving off the cosine. Okay? So we have to think about the system. The system is usually drawn with a little dotted line. It includes the pendulum. And we actually have to include the Earth in the system. So here's the Earth. Okay? And I will just include part of the Earth, even though it takes the whole Earth to make the gravity. And we'll get into the Earth part later when we get to gravitation. So there's the system. Now you're allowed to change the boundaries of the system whenever you need to. So here, our hand did external work. So our hand is not part of the system in this case. So we can draw it like this. There, it captured that. And the Earth is down here, right like that. And it goes up like that. So there's the system now. So you can see the reason I labeled it external work that's being done on the system is my finger that applied the force that did the work is external to the system. And that's why the energy that is supposed to be conserved is allowed to increase if work comes in from outside. And then the final state is here. So now it's swinging, it's going back down, and it's coming back up. So it's swinging like this, like this like this, and like that. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And now you have the case where you have um, exchange between kinetic and potential energy. You have what it's doing right now. It's going from potential, uh, swinging through with kinetic, back up to potential, back to kinetic. But all that energy it has had to come from the outside because it started with none. And we have conservation of energy. So here we would say E mechanical is greater than 0. It's actually equal to the external work. Let's look at this mathematically, and we'll see another way to write the law of conservation of energy that you may see in classes and books. So let's say the start, the starting condition. The starting condition was that we had um, a constant value of um, the initial kinetic energy plus the initial gravitational potential energy. Those, that was uh, k naught and u naught. And then, after we did the push, so this is, a, this is a start, and then here is the final state. 
right? So here we'll say start, and here we'll say final. And after we were done, we had whatever we started with, the constant, plus whatever showed up because we pushed it, right? So we had the constant, which in our case was 0, but it doesn't have to be 0, plus the external work, right? And that's equal to k final plus u final. We've got some higher energies. Right? So we could put finals on here. There's kinetic final and potential final, and it just shuffles back and forth. So another way to write the law of conservation of energy is to then just subtract these. Right? So you have these two equalities. This side equals that side. These two sides subtract. These two sides subtract. Just put like a minus sign there. And you say the constant plus the external work minus that constant, that's just the external work. The external work equals the initial, or the, I'm sorry, the final kinetic energy minus the initial. Well, that's just the change in kinetic energy, delta K. And then the final potential minus the initial potential, that's just the change in potential energy, delta U. So sometimes you'll see uh, conservation of mechanical energy written this way. And it looks a little confusing, but this is really all it's saying, is that it's not really mathematically proper. It doesn't make a lot of sense to say an equation equals constant. That's really what you're saying, is it's constant unless something else comes in. So one elegant way to say all that is just this. If you bring in external work, that's equal to how much kinetic and potential energy you gain. If you don't bring in any external work, if it's zero, then there's zero change. All you can do is exchange between the two. You can't actually increase the total energy. So really, all those ideas are contained in here. You may hear about the work energy theorem as one of the first ideas of conservation of energy, sometimes as it's presented. And that's just the case when there's no mechanism for potential. You might see written work external equals delta K, work energy theorem. That's true. That's just a special case of this where there's no potential energy. So the, inner, the total energy can change. It just only if an external, um, external entity comes in and does some work. 